Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Disco Elysium with me, Bring It On. Let's talk to the cafeteria manager. The man with the unimpressive beard notices you approaching. He drops the ledger he was holding and turns to the lieutenant. The man with the unimpressive beard. Mr. Gart, right? You run this place. The lieutenant glances into his little notebook. Yes. He responds tersely. I am Kim Kitsuragi from Prison 57. This is an inter-district investigation, so joining me from Prison 41. He looks to you, realizing he still doesn't know your name. <laughs> the Harbinger of Ruin. This is a reference to when we shook hands with Kim. And I'm currently in between names. Oh, these are funny. Okay, um... Let's go for the... Strong, silent type. Say nothing. Right. Now, I know it took us a while to arrive at the scene. It also took you a while to call us and report the dead body. It was you who placed the call, yes? No, I only just got here. It was probably Sylvie who called you. She usually works the bar here. I'm only temporarily taking over her duties. Do you have her number? As a matter of fact, I do. He looks behind a pile of coasters, finds a slip of paper, and hands it to the lieutenant. You said you just got here. From where? Are you a local? What, of Martinez? No, I live in Jamrock. I only sometimes come here to keep an eye on the place. This is just one of the many, many cafeterias I manage. <laughs> yeah, three. But you still know your way around, yes? In case we need directions. Yes, I know where some things are, but... As I said, I don't live here. I just used to work here. And I'm not going to start working here again, if that's what you think. I didn't imply that. Detective. He turns to you. Uh, yes? I have everything. You? Oh, you mean, do I have questions? Ask them. Yes, yes. He means, do you have questions for me, like a police officer would? The cafeteria manager is clearly agitated again. He thinks you're stupid, sire. Why did Sylvie go away? Haven't you asked me that already? What is it with you and this woman? She has nothing to do with this. No, before I asked you where, now I'm asking you why she left. Okay, you got me. She went away because of the dead body out back. And because I asked for her number. That's why Sylvie went away. I hope you appreciate that. Thank you. A lieutenant says. He opens his little notebook at the cover. The number is safely tucked away in a small pocket. Uh, didn't go well? I asked an employee out. She didn't want to come, but felt obliged to. It was a bad idea. Now, what is so goddamn fascinating about that for you? It's got nothing to do with the lynching. I guess I like to be thorough. Good for you. Uh, was there something else? I'd like to get back to what I was doing. Where exactly is the body? Behind this building, there's a courtyard. They hoisted him up on a tree there. He points to the kitchen behind him. And how do we get there then? That's easy. See that door there? First you exit through that. Then to your right, you should see a big hole in the fence. A really big one. You can get to the courtyard through there. No need for the keys. The hole is big enough for the Franco-Nigerian cavalry to fit through. Who killed him? I don't know who killed him. I'm not the police. That's your job. Did you kill him? What are you, crazy? Of course I didn't kill him. I guess that's all. Let's go. Not so fast. You owe me 130 real. Uh, he points to you. Uh, what's real? Oh, excuse me. You owe me 130 real. He pronounces the R with a mock arist aristocratic accent. The IIR, or inter real, is the global reserve currency. Whatever part of the world you're in right now, it's safe to assume he means you owe him some money. Oh, I understand. You mean I owe you money? Wow, you're a genius. <laughs> yes, that's right. Money. You owe this establishment 130 real. 
He points to the red ledger on the counter. <laughs> You're under arrest. <laughs> uh, what do I owe this place for? Let's see. Three nights at a tariff of 20 real comes to 60 real. Then there's the window you annihilated. The hole in the window was the first thing I saw when I came to work. So don't try to tell me you didn't. That will be 40 real in damages. Another thing you've annihilated is half the bar. You've run a tab of 30 real. Actually, more, but we'll round it down to 30 for your hard work maintaining the stability and order of Revachol. That's 60 plus 40 plus 30 equals 130 real. And yes, real is still money. But what exactly is money? What are you, a philosopher? Actually, I might be. Money is what grown-up people use to pay for things. Things like this hostel room, or or eight bottles of potent blend, and nine packs of royal extra. We use it for everything, really. Proceed and show him the coins you found. Is this money? Yes, it is. I count them and give them to him. That's 10 plus 10 plus 20 equals 40. I'm now down to 90, right? No, you see... That's 40 cents. Cents are a form of currency 100 times smaller than the real. I'm not even going to take this. Come back when you have 130 real. There's a tinge of sadness in his voice. 100 times smaller? Yes. But that's horrible. It is. He stands silently looking at the coppers on the counter. Isn't it evil? The order of magnitude between what is asked of a person and what they have. Darkness rides. Pick up the coins. It does, doesn't it? There's a shuffle of nylon as Lieutenant Kitsuragi looks for something in the pockets of his orange bomber. That's cop four. I haven't offered to pay because I don't have any money either. There was another option. What are you, a philosopher? Money is what grown-up people use to pay... I don't want to interrupt him, but uh, things why like do I need it? Oh, for survival, to pay me. Unless you want to become a hobo. Do you want to become a hobo? There's nowhere else to stay in Martinez, and it's a cold spring outside. Money doesn't make you happy, but it lets you be unhappy for a while longer. If you run out of money, you die. It's like that for all of us. Me too. That's why I need you to pay me. I'm not an asshole. He stops and says, mostly to himself. I wonder if that has something to do with Sylvie. That, uh, last comment. Uh, interesting. Where do I get it from? Are you serious? <laughs> from your work? I don't know. You can take bribes, I guess. I'm sorry. I don't think cops can take bribes. He looks at the lieutenant. Some do take recompense, but only to survive. Yes, it is. No, you see, that's 40. It is. Isn't it? There's a shuffle of nylon as Lieutenant Kitsuragi looks for something in the pockets of his orange bomber. Alright, uh, what happens now? I'm sorry, but he has to pay. I can't let him stay here any longer if he doesn't. If he doesn't have the money by tonight, then... He shrugs. Or, uh, sorry, he also he turns to the lieutenant. Officer. Maybe you are better off working this from home for now. You live in Jamrock, right? It's not that far away. Isn't there somewhere else I can stay around here? You mean somewhere else to run up a huge debt? I don't think so. The union squeezed most places out of business to fund a strike. You're better off home. I don't remember where my home is. Officer, you really need to take this up with your station. I have a shortwave radio in my car. Call them, ask for assistance. We have to get this investigation started now. A pattern of creases appears on his forehead. Good luck. The man wants to say something, and thinks better of it. By the way, where is home? The address is coming up blank, and this place sure isn't it. I really don't remember. But you've been at this hostel cafeteria for only three nights. Where were you before? You had to be somewhere. I don't know. Near? South, maybe. You don't really know, do you? I don't. Does this mean I'm homeless? 
South, maybe. Doesn't sound like somewhere you can stay if you run out of money. Can I trace the way back somehow? To the exact street? The exact number on a building? You can try. Run some addresses in your head when you get the time. Maybe a street or an apartment will appear. Lonesome long way home. So plus one encyclopedia when I have this equipped. Alright, let's rewind. Let's trace your drunken steps back home. Jump across the race channel bridge southwest of here. Fall over. Get up. Get off the asphalt in 20 minutes. Shuffle your feet through courtyards, scaring little children. Go under the Great Ray's motor tract, the 881, until so you reach Le Domaine Eminent in North Jamrock. The streets are frozen this time of year, caked with ice. Walk down Main to Perdition. There's a side alley there, your footprints in the mud. Alright, we'll let that stew for a bit. And then we have two new tasks, pay for damages. You need to pay for the damages you cause in the whirling in rags, or you won't have a place to stay tonight. Ask around for money, and be careful with your spending. If you're unsure how much you owe, ask Art. Who made the call reporting the crime? Someone reported the hanging to the RCM. If you find out who it was, it may shed new light on the events. You have an idea where to start, but the caller could have been anyone. I mean, call Sylvie using Kim's shortwave. Which we also need to use to... Uh, report our missing badge. The theme on that pinball machine is a standard royalist theme. Used on everything, from pinball cabinets to full flavor cigarettes. Uh, what are its harm uh, what are its hallmarks? Clinging to a picture book version of the past century, waiting for the king to come back and cast out all the profiteers and homosexuals. Basically, imagine a yellow plastic crown with a liquor brand emblazoned on it. The idea of a king in a century gone is pretty fascinating. The sentiment is called anti-centennial nostalgia, pining for a time before the turn of the century. It's common even now, after 50 years. Alright, so she didn't talk to us last time because she wanted us to go talk to Kim first. Maybe she'll talk to us now. Hello again, sweetie. I see you've met up with your colleague. She looks at the lieutenant. The lieutenant nods politely. Wait, who's Sweetie? Who's Sweetie? Why, you are, officer. I'm no Sweetie. Look at me. You're a handsome man, officer, with your mustache and your chiseled jaw and that silly dimple on your chin. Well, thanks. I appreciate it. You must forgive me. I'm getting so scatterbrained. I completely forgot to introduce myself. She slaps herself on the forehead. I'm Lena. My husband Morel and I are staying with our friend Gary just down the street, but I come here for tea when they're away. Her eyes glitter over the rims of her glasses as she looks up, smiling. This Lena is wacky enough for the Motley crew. Hire her on the spot. <laughs> okay. I don't know if you've noticed, but I don't know where I am, or what I'm doing, or anything. Yes, officer. You look rather dazed. Like a stunned fox. But surely things can't be that bad. Her eyes follow your movements with some concern. Well, I drank so hard I forgot literally everything. Oh my. You know where we are, right? It takes a moment to process. Uh, the Whirling and Rags Cafeteria. It was on my keys. That's right. And where is the Whirling and Rags Cafeteria itself located? In Revishol. Yes, indeed. We are in the fine city of Revishol. Honestly, I don't know diddly squat about Revishol. What kind of place is this? How would I even begin to tell you? Revishol is the most beautiful city in the world. We're fortunate to be here, you and I. 
Uh, her gray eyes widen. I haven't seen very many other cities personally, but everyone says so. Revachol is a rare jewel. This city used to rule the world, though it has seen better days. There's a pause as she studies your expression. You must look quite lost. Speaking of history, you know what year it is, yes? It's the spring of 51. That's right, dear. How splendid. Here, take this pen. Knowledge should always be rewarded. Her relief is palpable. She was getting pretty worried about you there, but now she relaxes her shoulders. I can tell that this is taxing for you, so I'll just ask one more question. What regime are we living under? What mode of government? Um, some kind of democracy, maybe? Nope, sadly not. Revachol is what's called a zone of control, under an alliance of foreign powers called the Coalition. We have no government of our own, and what democracy we have is market-driven. She thinks. So I do like how they give the cop amnesia, so that the player has a reason to ask all these questions and understand. So I shouldn't feel as hesitant, because it... The first couple of episodes, I was hesitant to ask a lot of these questions because it makes my character look incompetent. But I think this is all just part of the mechanic so the player can get a an idea of what the city, you know, what's going on here. Uh, you know, exposition. Meaning, buying is voting. If there's no government, how come there are cops? Oh dear. And you were doing so well. There aren't any cops in Rivishal, not in the traditional sense. The status of law enforcement has been a complicated matter since the revolution. She shakes her head, suddenly very worried. But we should stop for today, sweetie. You look like you need a break. Besides, I'm not the best person to explain the big things to anyone. She's scared now. She's realized you really are brain damaged. So, how did I do? You were doing quite well up until the end there. It does look like you're having trouble remembering things. History and places. Remembering reality in a word. It's very odd. A sigh. The lieutenant buries his nose in his notebook. But maybe a fresh set of eyes is what the world needs. And while I'm no doctor, such bouts of amnesia are often temporary, so I, I wouldn't worry too much. So what is the revolution you mentioned? A defeat, I'm afraid. The people of this archipelago tried to build something new, something different. The rest of the world didn't like it, so they came and ended it. This was 42 years ago. What does that have to do with there not being any cops? It has something to do with everything. I really don't know how to explain it better. That's interesting. That's a similar response that we could have given to the cafeteria manager asking about Sylvie. We said everything has something to do with everything. All right, who could tell me more? Conclude. Someone more educated in sweeping matters. Maybe you should ask. She turns to the lieutenant. No, I'm not an encyclopedia. I won't be a guide either. I'm a detective. He looks away. Of course. Then, I don't know. Someone rich, maybe? Wealthy people are educated. Though, I don't know where you would find a wealthy person in Martinez. Uh, she turns to you. I seem to be in a chair. Yes, dear. Uh, I'm a paraplegic. It's a little straightforward, but... A paraplegic is someone with limited or no ability to use the lower half of their body. Paraplegia is caused by spinal cord injuries, like falling from a great height, or a grenade explosion. I'm sorry. It was rude of me to mention the wheelchair. Let's move on. That's quite all right. I'm used to people asking questions. I know they're thinking about it anyway. How do you like to roll with me? Uh, I don't know if that's an intended pun or not. <laughs> Whatever do you mean? Her eyes light up. I want you to be my wheelchaired partner in fighting crime. Uh, ridding backyards of corpses. Catching sequence killers. Sequence killers? Oh my. 
But I think you already have a partner, sweetie. She sounds impressed. A partner who needs you to help him get a corpse down from a tree. You're probably right, Kim. It seems to me that you lucked out with your partner. He has the look of an upstanding officer of the law. Someone you can lean on, and sweetie, you are looking unsteady. All right, I've got to get going now. I'm not going to ask her for money. Of course, dear. Good luck with your case. She gives you a small wave. All right, so she gave us a pen. So we just sell it, or do we equip it? So we just sell it. A pen with a green ape head on the e on one end. They have closed its eyes, a kind of expression adorning its face. It seems to be meditating. Alright, uh, let's go upstairs. I want to see if Kim has any reactions to upstairs real fast. Plus, it's been, what, an hour and a half? Maybe, uh, what's-her-face is out of the shower. We should probably try and get that body out of the tree first. That should probably be our, our priority right now. The door is closed. Uh, knock again. Still no answer. Uh, yeah, let's ask her some questions. A knock again, much harder. Still nothing. The lieutenant gives you a quick glance. All right, let's just leave. <laughs> nothing good's gonna come of that. Let's see if he can say anything or has anything to say inside of our apartment. Can try to look at your broken down bathroom door. Kim also tries not to look at the pile of tape viscera on the carpet, or the weird suitcase on the hat rack, or the potted plant dying in the corner. But it's all just too morbid to ignore. I'm sorry for this. No problem, officer. Takes a step toward the door, like he'd like to leave. The window stands broke. All right, so that's all he had to say. I'm assuming this is so we can sleep, right? The bed is cold and not particularly inviting, but it's yours. The sheets look awful. All right, no time to rest yet. All right, let's see if there's anything new to say outside with Kim and our party, and then we'll head back down and exit, see if we can take that body out of the tree. Actually, start our investigation. I keep. Keep procrastinating. This game's already hitting a little too close to home. <laughs> All right. Head back inside. Uh, we had a new journal entry, I think, but I think that's from when we talked to Lena about figuring out reality. You get a reality lowdown. You have no idea where you are. Then I encourage you to ask others to explain the world to you in greater detail. Perhaps try a rich person. Rich people are educated. Well, first things first, we have a, a corpse to inspect. I worry about getting a reality lowdown later. That sugary black rum stain on the counter makes you teary-eyed with joy. It's almost touching how syrupy and sticky it is. How long have you been up already? Uh, two hours. An hour would have been bad. Two hours is mystical. You have truly wiped out all trace of yourself if you haven't thought about rum and lemonade yet. Actually, should I be thinking about this? Looks like drinking hasn't turned out too well for me. Maybe you haven't turned out well for your drinking. Have you thought about that? Get a goddamn rum and lemonade to yourself, boy. Or better yet, lick that stain off the counter. <laughs> lick it, but only a little. Um, don't lick it. What happened, man? You used to be cool. Go get your boring normal person drink then. It would go well with those cigarettes. That's a great combination. Sounds like an awful combination. Find booze and drink it. Thing where it feels really bad. You have to take the edge off. Find a bottle of alcohol, 
put it in your hand, equip it in the held slot in your inventory, the magic will happen by yeah, by its own. Um, hmm, this is like a really bad idea. I'm trying to be respectable and not lick <laughs> alcohol stains off the counter. <laughs> Especially with my new partner. A heap of snow melts into this oil barrel. The street sign reads, screw the police. Pigs go home. The street name is illegible. Goods from the lorry haphazardly litter the surroundings. Close for winter, please use main entrance. Alright. Let's steal this body before we do anything else. It's been hanging up for seven days, it's time for it to, to come on down. There are bottles inside. You pick them up if you had a bag. Rue de Saint Gislaine 8B. An old call box with a matrix of push buttons lists all the companies in the East Delta Commerce Center. Uh, main Hall Building A. An off key melody starts playing after you ring the doorbell. Then a woman picks up the oh, receiver. I didn't mean to call anybody. Uh, who's Kuno? This is the police. Please open the door. Oh, I'm sorry, officer. I thought you were... There's a spot of static that overrides her words. But the doorbell is broken, and the bookstore shouldn't even be on the list anymore. So I can't help you. Please don't call here again. Thanks. A single beep indicates that the line has gone dead. Well, let's leave that for now. I feel I should prioritize what's going on back here. The letter R wears a crown, on the ribbon below, a light above descending. It's the logo of the municipality of Revachol. This trash container is locked. The sliding lid has a padlock that says, whirling in rags. There's something in there, not necessarily connected to the case, but still. Why am I looking at you, trash container? You're just a trash container. Maybe you're prioritizing it. Well, it is a container. A lieutenant. What do you think could be in there? Trash? Trash. Oh, food waste it. from the cafeteria. They lock these containers to keep the derelicts from flocking in. Could be evidence, too. Seems like a reasonable assumption. Mm -hmm. He leans in to inspect the lock. How do we get the lock open? We could try using a pry bar. There's one in my motor carriage, or... Or, Lieutenant? Or we could ask for a key from the manager of the Whirling in Rags. He probably has one. There's a locked trash container behind the Whirling in Rags. The manager guard should have a key. Alternatively, you could use brute force to pry the lid open. You just need a pry bar. Smells like spoiled meat and curdled dairy. A human being de decomposes. Oh yeah, Napa Kimpi Kuno. This kid's ladder isn't rickety, very climbable. Someone's trying to grow herbs in this greenhouse. Some money and magnesium for plus one morale. This winch mechanism has been oxidizing for some years. That's around the other side. An inconspicuous pile of the roofing material, Etonite. Uh, what is this? It's nothing. Someone just left some roofing material slanted against an old shack. Glad you asked. When junior researcher Olari Tal invented Etonite in the Vartner Polytechnic Institute some 30 odd years ago, he thought it would last forever. Hence the name. Etonite. Sadly, the only lasting thing turned out to be the material's highly carcinogenic effect. 
My perception check. Why am I looking at this pile of the roofing material? Because there's a secret door hidden behind the panels of Etonite. That's why they're too orderly. Pull the panels aside. There it is. You see a shabby little door. What is this, Dan? A tool shed? Let's investigate. He peeks inside. Alright, we'll hold off on that for now. Let's get this body down before I do anything else. There are several footprints in the mud, left by work boots. Anywhere from six to twelve pairs have walked here. What kind of boots? Heavy workers' boots with reinforced toes and hobnails all over the yard. Isn't this something an industrial worker would wear? A lieutenant. Worker's boot tracks. Point to them. Noted. Lieutenant takes out his little notebook. All right, visual calculus. Get an exact count. What do you think you are? A super detective? You're hungover. These are just dents in the mud. No pattern emerges for the time being. Shoot, I could have had... If I had taken this one um, thought out... We would have had a higher chance of succeeding. Making some progress, though. We're about a third of the way through. A little over a third of the way. Let's talk to this kid, tell him to stop throwing rocks at this corpse. Kuno's got this. The boy throwing rocks at the dead body can't be older than 12. If there ever was such a thing as an ugly kid, then this is it. <laughs> He's almost exquisite in his ugliness, like a gremlin. <laughs> I uh, yells the other kid behind the fence. Hey kid, a word. Police business. Right in the dick, Kuno. Get him right in the dick. The children ignore you. It's love it in the dick. The boy is sweating profusely. His eyes are like two black holes and his jaw is twitching as if trying to break free from the empire of his body. Stop throwing rocks at my crime scene. Hits himself. The rake, Kuno! You should throw the rake at him, Kuno! The fuck? Does Kuno know what a rake is? Kuno is not a gardener. Uh, Kim, what should we do? We shouldn't do anything. I don't tempt such forces. What forces? You will see. The language these kids are using. Pure, unfettered id. There will be no reasoning with those creatures. Are you kids siblings? The fuck are you talking about? He throws another rock. He's calling us f***ers, Kuno. He says we're fucking each other. Look, I have questions for you. All right, entertain the Kuno. Show me what you got. What you got there? What you got, huh? Show me what you got. He juts his chin out. I really, these kids are already annoying me. Of uh, the body. What do you know about it? Shitload pig. What's your question? Don't tell the pig shit, Kuno! Uh, Whisper. Kim, help me out here. Uh, what do we want to know? If I were to want to waste my time, which I do not, I would ask them who he is, how he got there, and the usual. The usual being? Have you seen anything out of the ordinary? Or have you seen anything suspicious? Do you know who he was? Kuno's fuck imp. Kuno uses the fuck imp for target practice. He picks up a rock. He's trying to hide the fact that he doesn't know. So you don't know anything? I meant who he was before he died. Kuno knows what you meant. Kuno's not a snitch. That's all. Trying to make Kuno sing into the popo phone. He shakes his head, clearly offended. Do you know how it got up there? Probably climbed. Kuno was busy down the road when that shit went down. So you didn't see it happening? You heard Kuno. Kuno wasn't even in Martinez. Kuno wasn't in Revachol. Kuno wasn't regional. He puffs himself up. Oh, okay. Oh, where did you go then? I don't know. Some fucking... He looks around, trying to come up with something. Mesk or... or I don't know. Some other place. Night City. Kuno was in fucking Night City. There is no Night City anywhere. That sounds like the name of a city in some pulp science fiction novel. And where is Night City? 
Kuno gives this info out on a need-to-know basis, and you don't need to know. Kuno didn't smoke the gimp, if that's what you meant. Probably clan. You ate Kuno. I don't know. Mesco. There is no Night City anywhere. That sounds like the name of a city in some pulp science fiction novel. That's a fictional city name. Night City doesn't exist. Why you gotta be riding Kuno's ass? You haven't been where Kuno's been. You haven't been in Kuno's head. You wanna know where Kuno was? You wanna know what Kuno's been fucking up to? I don't tell him that, Kuno. It's lame. It's not fucking lame. Kuno's building Kuno's city. Night City. Rage City. The city of rage. That's it, and it's not lame. Lame! That's the name of Kuno City, bitch. Get the fuck off Kuno's back. This shit ain't about that. Have you seen anyone suspicious around? Just a couple of pigs sniffing around in the dirt. That seems pretty fucking suspicious to Kuno. Yeah, you tell the faggoty Kuno. Looks like you're a faggoty now. Whatever that means. The suspicious question doesn't really work in antagonistic situations. Alright, more on this later. Uh, right now, let's talk about something else. You're testing Kuno's patience here. Get lost, f About the crime scene. You kids play often in this yard. Right, pig. This is where Kuno plays with his little wooden choo-choo. What do you want with it? That ladder yours? No, it's not fucking Kuno's. It's ancient. Look at it. He thinks you're fucking full, Kuno. He says you climb the ladder up to your magic tree house. An evil squeak comes from behind the fence. Get the fuck out of here, pig. Kuno doesn't have a magic tree house. What's in the greenhouse over there? Dunno. Kip that's gardener used to work there. He shrugs. Kip is a pejorative term used to describe people of South Seminese or Eri Oppergite descent. It used to be a common first name among the Eri Oppergites of Ilmara. Not so much anymore. Uh, hold on. The gardener used to work there? Yeah, that's what Kuno said. She couldn't handle the heat, so she took off. Kuno can take it. <sighs> Shit, nothing to Kuno. He fills his lungs with the rancid air. His eyes get a little watery. I mean, the young woman by the whirling in rags. That gardener. So I probably should I have talked to her first? Look, Kuno doesn't explain shit. Kuno just says shit. He looks you in the eye and nods, as if agreeing with himself. Yeah, her. I was wondering about that trash container. Don't be wondering about Kuno's shit, pig. I've got a very strong hunch there's something of importance in it. Something I must find. Fuck does Kuno care about your hunch? That's your shit. You figured it out. Alright, I might have questions later. For now, let's talk about something else. Yeah, whatever. Kuno doesn't give a shit. I gotta ask, who is Kuno? Kuno's Kuno, pig? The boy points to his chest with both thumbs. So you refer to yourself in the third person. The fuck are you calling a third person? Kuno's the fucking first person? Watch out, Kuno! He's trying to fiddle you! He's gonna put his hands on you! The thing behind the fence starts squealing, shrill and violent like a fire alarm. Help! Pig's got Kuno! Help! Rape! The sound gets louder as a child shouts at the windows overlooking the yard. Help! Just answer the questions. Help! He's digging his dick out! Escalate, Kuno! His dick is out! You're afraid! Pigs are there in Kuno! Somebody, please! It's full blast now. The wind carries the message far and wide across Martinez. What is this sick charade? No! <laughs> Get off Kuno, you sick fat fuck! The boy screams. His freckled face contorted in hideous, uncontainable laughter. The nearly psychopathic way that can slip in and out of the act implies you're not the first victim. Who put you up to this? No one. Kuno's doing this because he likes it, pig. He whispers suddenly. This is where Kuno establishes dominance over you. You can't let that happen. It will make things harder down the line. You may end up missing crucial information. Someone put you up to this. You put him up to this yourself when you decided to talk to him in the first place. Listen to your f friend. <sighs> Ikuno hawks a loogie on the ground. The phlegm is yellowish and bubbling somehow. 
Okay, no one put you up to this. Help! The RCM is trying to fuck Kuno in the ass! Tears of joy mixed with sweat, smelling of laundry detergent on his face. I mean, I want to hit him. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to swing at him. Only 20% chance, though. So shut him down. <laughs> you didn't shut him down. Your fat fist didn't meet its target. Instead, it pulled you down with it. Say nothing. Try to hold it together. Pigs trying not to cry. Kuno can't believe this shit. Can no one stop the Kuno? It's like he's now realized he has superpowers. Pig, Kuno thought you had this. What happened? Kuno can do anything now. He's writhing with joy. Like the power you gave him is too much to take. Fuck your shoulder, fuck your knee, fuck your fat body up. The one behind the fence hisses like a lit fuse ready to go off of delight. Yeah, I deserve this. Yeah, you deserve this. Trying to show your dick to Kuno. Kuno was scared. Oh God, do something quick. They're going to start that again. Yeah, laugh it up. Let's just get back to it. Get up. Kuno beat the shit out of the popo. <laughs> beat your fucking knee off. The kid is laughing so hard, tears are running down his freckled cheeks. I told you not to tempt such forces. The annoyance in his voice is directed at you, not the gremlins. Now, how about we go and do something worth the public's time? Alright, I should probably heal up my morale a little bit. And then I'm gonna... End the episode here. We'll take down the body in the next one. Oh. The ladder's for kids. It would hold the weight of a grown man. Yeah, we'll take down the corpse in the next one, and I guess explore... Kuno's shack. Somehow I knew that was his shack without going inside of it. Not sure how uh, how I knew that. Either way, we'll do it that next time. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.